You're watching the Technology Tell Network. Tonight at 10.45 on the Apple Channel, retired English footballer David Beckham returns to the LA Galaxy with an iPhone 6 in his shorts to dispel reports of how easily the iPhone 6 can bend. At 11.20, an accidental photo post of a hotel room leads Helen and Sue to believe their room is haunted at the Paris Shower Show in a hilarious new episode of Up the Apples and Pears. And at midnight, Apple Tell After Dark explores the seedy side of one infinite loop and Emmanuel goes to Cupertino. Right now, Kirk Heiner and David Temple show us how to replace the hard drive of a 2006 iMac, sponsored by Otherworld Computing. Here we are once again, deep within the bowels of Tectel Towers, where we are going to try to bring this 2006 iMac back from the dead. Technically, it's not dead. There are hard drive problems. Now, before we get into this, I want to tell you one way we were able to solve the problem. Um, it wasn't starting. Guy would turn it on. It would just click and click and click and not do anything. He had information on here he wanted to get off. We couldn't get it running, but then we came up with one idea. We did this. We turned it back on. Hard drive started just fine. Got everything off of it. Turned it back like this. Turned the computer back on. Didn't work. So... That's obviously not a hard drive we want to work with. Now, when you have a 2006 iMac, there's not a whole lot you can do to get it running again, except call the good people at Otherworld Computing, otherwise known as OWC, otherwise known as MacSales.com. They hooked us up with a um, couple bits of hardware that we could use to try to get this running again and get it running at peak efficiency. There are all kinds of mods that you can do with iMacs 2008, 2009, 2010 to get them running almost as good as a new iMac. That's really what you want to focus on. But if you have an old iMac like this, that's, this one is now eight years old, you can at least get it running to the best of its capabilities. Go to OWC, ask the right questions. They will hook you up um, to get it going exactly the way you can, optimally, we'll say. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is max out the RAM. RAM is easy, so let's take a look. Okay, for RAM, all you need to do is unscrew a plate down here, and it's a regular Phillips um, slotted screw, so not an issue there. Please ignore the Dell PC in the background. As I mentioned, we are in the bowels of Tech Dell Towers. Now, let me get this open. Now you can see in here there are two handy little levers in here. You just kind of pull those, out pops the RAM. You want to remember which side the slot is on so you're getting the new ones in the right way. Now I'm kind of stuck. Here we go. All right. New OWC RAM. Just fits right in there. And then push these back in. You will hear them click. Nice and easy. Okay, those are in place. Then you just put the cover back on. If you're just doing RAM, very easy. No special tools required. No reason to be afraid. We are now going to begin the disassembly of the iMac. And hope it goes well. We are now going to begin the process of removing the front bezel, and that starts with unscrewing the bottom plate down here. You are going to need a T8 Torx screw to do that. We have got one, and David is going to do the honors. Oops, not quite enough. Now it starts to get tricky. We are going to remove the front bezel from the iMac, and to do that we have to push a card up in here and in here to release the latch mechanisms. Um, let's see if this works before we have to use any of the special tricks. Uh, can't seem to find it. Okay. 
Okay, about 10 minutes later, a little bit of duct tape and one totally sacrificed GameStop power-up rewards card later. We finally got that off. The latches are hard to get to. Um, it's also possible you're going to flip that latch and not even know it. But once you do have that done, you turn the Mac over, stand side down. You have to be careful here, Dave, if you could zoom in on this. I've already done this, but these here, if you remember from the RAM portion, were the release mechanisms for that. You have to pull this piece of plastic up over them, which I've done. Then it's just a matter of removing the top part, which it is definitely taped in here. So we're gonna do this kind of cautiously. Got it. Okay. Now, there's a part down here, if you can zoom in on that, Dave, we're going to have to do some disconnections here. These are the latches that we were pulling at. But right now we're gonna worry about this guy. The next step is to disconnect the microphone cable here. There is yellow tape over it we're going to have to remove. And as I do this, I will also tell you this entire unit here, this big mass of cables was kind of smashed down inside there. We had to use a screwdriver to get to it, to pry it out. Very simple to do once we figure out we had to do that. iFixit does ex explain that this is very delicate right here. So we need my dainty, dainty hands making this disconnection. I had to find where the piece was. And disconnected. Next step. We shouldn't have even stopped filming because the camera cable is very easy to get to right there. And now we have disconnected the entire front bezel of the iMac. That was worth it. We're moving on to the EMI shield here. This is actually taped down and we're going to need to peel this whole thing up. You can see in a couple of things, well, I say whole thing, we do not need to peel away from the top portion here. We're going to be able to just lay that back. So we need to get the bottom and the sides. A lot of it here has already been started. We are, I'm going to come in here with an X-Acto blade and kind of now I got a bad angle here. Let me pull this further over. Now you can use foil tape if you have to actually, oh, there we go. If you have to um, kind of tear at the, the EMI shield. Um, so not a huge problem. Okay, that side's up. All right, you, oh, yep, see, just, we figured out after ripping it that if you actually use the blunt side, of the X-Acto blade, you can kind of use that to sort of slide underneath and get a good cut. We now have the bottom portion cut out, so I am going to simultaneously pull back on both sides. And we're starting to get to the goodies. Oh, I completely tore it on this side and that side. But you know what, that's fine because we can just use foil tape to put that back together. I'm not going to worry about it. All right. Now what? All right, we are now going to remove the data cable, and this is done with a T6 Torx screwdriver. So when you get your kit, make sure you get your uh, T6, T8, and T10 are the ones we're going to need. David is taking these off with his T6 craftsmanship. He minored in T6 screws in college. And go ahead and disconnect that. And we're off. Now we really get to start digging into it. We are now removing the tape here from the edges, which isn't a very difficult task. You just got to make sure you get in and get the right angle. And Dave has already done his side, so you can check that out. Show him your side. Wonderful work. Wonderful work. Happy to help. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to remove four screws in order to get the screen out. You're going to need a T10 Torx screwdriver for this, preferably magnetized because these are going to be hard to get to. And if you lose them, they're going to be hard to get out. So let's see if I can even hit this. I, you know what? I bet our screwdriver is too fat and we're not going to be able to do this with the other ones. Jeez, how long is the screw? Oh, it's magnetized, but it fell off anyway. Yay! Operation, take out his spare ribs for $100. 
Okay, one screw to go. Um, I can't seem to get the screwdriver in there though. I need a clamp stat. Okay, we're getting closer. Uh, Mets and bomb scissors. And, all right. Oh, we've lost the Mets and bomb scissors. Quick, nurse, nurse. Let's actually use the clamps. Ah, so much dust. Hey! We're not going to lift out the screen. You don't want to lift this too high because there are still cables attached and that's what we're going to get to. And cripes, the screen is a little heavy. We now need to disconnect these cables um, from the lower right. We have already pulled this one out a bit using the hemostat to get that. Um, otherwise, you'd see us here wrestling with it for a while. And on this end, we got one side out. I'm going to try to get the other side out. And there we go. Okay, now, actually, there you go. Without having to do too much more, we can now see to our goal, which is this guy. Okay, now David is gonna go in and remove the last two cables um, from the screen. Try it with fingers first, got those out fine. And there we go. We're not going to remove the hard drive thermal sensor from the logic board. It is not actually that easy to remove. We did that earlier and just kind of partially plugged it back in. Now we are going to unscrew the hard drive using the T10 Torx screwdriver. There are two yeah, mounting screws there on the bracket. And then we will lift the left edge out, gaining access to some mounting wires that are there on the left of the drive. We're now removing the power cables and such from the hard drive. And out comes the thermosensor cable. And there we go, the big empty space in which we are now going to put our solid state drive.